Hello and welcome to the Shabra Show where Viv and Neil explore this big adventure called life. Our guest today is a VVVIP, which if you don't know what that stands for, means a very, very, very important person. Who could this possibly be? Well, it is none other than the GM and founder of HealthyLife.net, talented teacher and author, Linda McKenzie, who is going to tell us about her book, Symbols of You. Linda, this is such an honor to have you here with us. Thank you very much for coming on the Shabria Show today. Well, I am so glad to be with both of you guys today because um, I absolutely love your show um, and everything that you're doing is so much in the light and helping people. So I'm so glad that you allowed me to come on your show. I, I, it's been a pleasure so far. Well, I was very flattered when you when you said you'd be willing to come on the show. I was like, oh my gosh, I was did a, like a happy dance, and I, I I can't describe how I felt, and I can't describe how I felt just building up to this and thinking about it, and of course reading your book. And before we talk about your absolutely amazing book, can you please tell us a little more about yourself for all the listeners? Because I know you have many layers to you. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that would take about four hours. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's down to four, six. Well, uh, you know, what What happens is is that my autobiography, which I am writing and is going to be out in about two years, is called Life is Like Girl Scout Badges, right? And so, therefore, it means that I have done so many things in my life, and um, and I'm the type of person that once I learn something, I move on to something else and learn that and move on to something else. So my past life, <laughs> in this <laughs> life, uh, I was a, a communications engineer for Co Continental Airlines, and I redesigned, um, I, well, I redesigned the U.S. Senate Computer Center. I had a consulting company. I um, did, uh, when you go to the airport, if you're using computer-generated tickets, you know, on the airport, that was my design. Uh, I did, wow. I did uh, air ground radio and uh you know, voice, video, data, closed circuit TV, everything there. Um, and then uh, from there, I ended up, uh, I did a lot of things. I owned a metaphysical gift company. I was an author. Um, I, uh, When I got the chronic fatigue syndrome in, I guess, 1987. So I switched, and I... Uh, once my daughter was out of college, I ended up going into what I really wanted to do, and I did a couple of books, and uh, and then I was president of a dietary supplement company, and um, I don't know, I, everything that you could think of, I've probably done. <laughs> so, and then I started this network 21 years ago, and uh, we're going to 2.6 million listeners a month in about 137 countries. And, uh, That's unbelievable. I didn't know that. Yes, and we're over, and we're running on seventy-five channels of distribution, which means that our whole channel is simulcast on seventy-five different uh, channels um, throughout Europe, and we even have our own uh, radio station in Ireland. So you know, it's, it's so it's been a, a long journey, and um, because of the last 21 years of running the station, I really haven't had a chance to go out and publish the books that I've been writing because it takes a lot of work, as you know. Once yeah. you publish a book, you have to get it out there, and if you think, oh, I'll just write a book and let it go, you have to propel the action and the energy behind it to get it done and there's no reason to write a book unless you want somebody to buy the book because if they don't buy the book they don't read the book and they don't get the information so it's a waste of your time so you have to do it so I decided since that I'm going to be 75 next year uh, that I better get my A in gear so that, I can, so, that, so that I can get these books out so that they're not like a lost leader you know so so um, last year I got after 20 years I I published Symbols of You, and it's gotten great reviews. Um, it, it Publishers Weekly did a whole page on it, and uh, so um, I'm pretty happy with it, um, having gone back into it, you know. Well, I have to say it's a most, most, most impressive book because actually calling it a book isn't isn't correct. It's it's a compendium 
and this is my in my humble estimation, it's a compendium that presents global and historical symptoms of divination, and it's also it is also a manual or workbook for exploring yourself. I mean, it's two, it's two amazing tools in one, and um, I wonder what you think about my summary of what your book is. Well, I was patting myself on the back, saying, "Who was that person?" No. <laughs> No, um, but it also is a third thing. Uh, what you can use it for also, because it has 40 ancient wisdom topics in there. And so what you can use it for is if you have a dream, it, it's a dream interpretation book too. So that you can you can have a dream, and if you want to know what the frog means that you saw in your dream or what a uh, certain fish means or a bird or a flower, you can go to the book and it will help you figure that out too. So I tried to make it... Um, I tried to do a lot of things with this book because I, I want, when I do something, I want it to be good for everyone, something for everyone in there. And I wanted to make sure that um, it increases somebody's intuition. It helps people be mindful. It um, also helps, uh, there's ancient methods of divination in there um, from, you know, there's a card divination thing from the 1800s. Um, there's uh, dice fortune telling from India and um, domino fortune telling from China and uh, from, you know, way, 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 way back. And so you can get actually answers to life questions as well. Um, but you can figure out things about you. You can figure out things about people that you know. And um, so I wanted to make sure that also, somebody new coming into these ancient wisdom topics that, you know, there's so much out there that nobody knows where to start. So if you wanted to use this book just to find out if you have an affinity for something, then you can do the exercises and then go out and I encourage you go out and study other books and other things and other people on the one thing that you might want to expand your knowledge on. Yeah, it is. It's a full circle, isn't it? It's, it's a place to begin, and it's also a summary of everything. And so it's a place where you can go back to and end. It's kind of, it, it just takes you full circle, uh, and it's an astonishing uh, body of work, in, in my personal opinion. And it's really, really uh, very, very glad to have found access to it. But before we talk more about that, Linda, can you tell us the difference between a symbol and a sign? Oh, well, I'm going to give you my personal uh, conjecture on that because a symbol is something that has uh, a meaning. It's, uh, there's either, it could be a common symbol, a universal symbol, or a unique symbol. And a sign means something that's pointing the way. So you can use symbols as signs. Yes. Okay, so I think that's the best way to describe that. I think I can. I think I can understand that because I think I have an example. If I can share that, I I always advise my students that I'm training to look at the colours that their clients wear when they come in the in the door, because there's a communication from the colour that the person's wearing. And so then this client of mine was wearing something I'd never seen before, and it was a very yellow, a lemony yellow pair of pants. It was really bright. I hadn't seen her or anyone else wear anything in quite that shade, and it it was remarkable. Um, and I still, even though I'm always telling people, look at the color that your client is wearing, despite that, I didn't think about it until she said, I've had a very itchy skin. And as soon as she said that, I clicked. She was wearing salsa yellow, and salsa is the homeopathic remedy for a uh, for the homeopathic constitution or state of salsa, which gives rise to skin conditions, including itchy skin. And in that moment, it all came together. The color she was wearing, the communication from that color, and how to make sense of it. And so that was very, very... Um, Right there, and when I read your book, I thought, ah, color and sign and symbol, and I could see the overlap between signs and symbols in that moment, and you've just explained that really well. Well, and and you have to understand that everybody's interpretation of things is unique. I mean, no one on the planet has the same constitution body-wise, 
We are individual. Nobody has the same mindset. Nobody has the same spiritual aspects. Everybody is an individual with that. Okay, so so are symbols. So your interpretation of symbols are unique as you. And certain symbols will mean certain things to one person and send something different to something else. That's why in the exactly. beginning in the beginning of the book, I went back to the 1800s and I went and gathered all the symbols and picked the best two out of three. Right? If when they said when a couple of ancient texts and things said the same thing, I said okay. And then, but in the beginning of my book, I say, hey, if if your interpretation of the symbol is something different, then take yours. You know, so because we have to work and learn for not not only each other, you know, ourselves first. It's like, right. you know, and first, it, yeah. And that's what what one has to remember, that if someone comes in wearing a pair of sulfur yellow pants, it takes time to figure out what it means to that individual, and you have to let the information emerge. You can't impose your idea or your meaning onto that moment. Because just as you say, everyone is individual, and that's the wisest and truest words we could possibly say and point out over and over again. Well, you know, they asked me for many years to, you know, I've been psychic for a long time, and I tested my abilities for 37 years before I came out as a psychic, and I've been a healer as well, and, and um, you know, and I... You know, I worked, uh, you know, um, I was on a lot of ABC, NBC, worked with the uh, governments, went over and did paranormal uh, verification for the British government. Um, I worked with uh, uh, even one of the presidents in the United States, I'm not going to say which one, uh, asked me to be their psychics. Their wife asked me to be their psychic when they were in office. I said, I don't do politics or lottery tickets or sports books. Um, so, uh, but, um, uh, you know, so I've had a lot of, uh, information and people will say, well, you teach me to be psychic. And I said, I can't teach you to be psychic. Um, so what I did was eventually I had gone to Omega and I did a five, uh, day course on giving examples and trying to use in their own unique way the 17 different distinct psychic abilities that I have found that I have. I use them all except one and, well, two. Uh, I don't do prophecy and I don't do transmediumship where an entity comes into me and then talks through me. I don't do that. Um, but um, so other than that, um, you know, what happens is is that, uh, um, and, and by the way, after five days, a, a couple of the people were remote viewing, you know, um, which was very astonishing. And um, But uh, as I said to them, you know, you have your own unique path. So, you know, if you're reading something and it doesn't feel right, take what you need and then throw the book away. And, you know, your own path is individual and your own way that you're going to open up your ability is individual. There's not one way that you can do it. So if you need to take a class, then take the class because there's something that you're your gut feel is telling you to do that, that you're going to learn something from it. But it's, don't ever let a class, one class, be the be-all, end-all of everything because you have unique powers as well. And so, you know, you want to make sure that you're understanding that and not just taking everything that somebody tells you verbatim. You're, uh, you know, I never took a class to do any of this. Um, uh, by the time I was 15, I had read every metaphysics book in the New York Public Library, and that was the end of it on that. So, um, but, uh, and then I just wake up and I listen and God tells me what to do and I say, okay. He says, jump. I say, how far? <laughs> <laughs> and then I argue with him saying, hey, I don't want to jump that far. <laughs> I do. I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I say, hey, we got. When I get upstairs, we're having a sit down. You know. <laughs> there we go, kicking and screaming all the way into right. the metaphysics. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we like to keep our feet on the ground, even as we have our head in our, in the clouds. I mean, truly, you know. So I want to ask you because. I really enjoyed the fish chart. I thought the fish chart spoke to me. I hadn't seen something like that before. And then I also obviously liked the flowers because I'm a great, uh, keen and very keen on gardening. 
and then the numerology as well, the numbers. I really like that. But, but Linda, what's your favorite thing? What's the thing that you respond to? I respond to it all. Um, I, I actually do. Um, the thing is, is that fish chart, I never found anything with symbols of fish. I had to really research and research to find things on fish. Okay, oh. and so um, what I ended up doing was uh, I found as I was researching these symbols that symbols were put into categories and different things by some of the characteristics of the symbol, right? So, um, you know, so a lot of times I would get a meaning from something, you know, that I was reading, but then uh, intuitively I would know that the fish was more than that. So, for example, um, you know, uh, for a lobster, um, I did find out that it was male energy, but I also know that lobsters are very aggressive and uh, one of the characteristics. And then I you know, I made sure that I was doing the right thing because I always check in if I'm not saying, hey, God, is this okay to do? And he goes, ah, okay, you go ahead and do it. So I said, okay. So, you know, and I always check in to make sure that it's going to be in truth and integrity. And so some of these things for the fish, you know, are my interpretation of what my hits were for the symbols. But that's the only one in the whole book. So I'm very glad that you picked up on that. Well, it was brand new to me, and so I went, I've never seen this before, and I really liked it. I had this inner response, which is actually what I want to say about the whole book, is the moment that I dipped into it, and I'd got about a third of the way through, I found it was influencing my day in a very constructive manner. I had become aware of something, and I had become aware of layers, in a way that I wasn't until I took a look at your book. And part of it, I think, is the content, but I think part of it is the way that you've laid it out with all these different charts, and it, which makes it very accessible. So it doesn't take uh, a huge amount of uh, studying to, get, to, to gain access to what you're saying. It just takes reading a sentence and then doing what you say, which is remarkable. Thank you so much, because that's exactly what I wanted to do. In these times, we have to be very positive and very open, okay? And because we have to combat fear, and we have to open up our intuition so that we can stay as positive as possible, so that we can be part of the collective consciousness to drive the positive aspects of the world to reduce the fear and the negative aspects of it. Um, and so that's what I wanted to do with this book, because I wanted you to remember that, okay, you see a butterfly in the book. Well, if you're walking along a path on a nature or, you know, um, or you're, uh, you know, just out, on, or you're looking out the window and you're seeing a butterfly, if you're, de- it dis- you know, deep in work, it's, uh, you know, it says, okay, the butterfly says, be joyful, you know, and so it kind of, you start to understand all these wonderful things that are around us that are there to help us move through our day in a very constructive and very happy, peaceful way. And so once you know these things, you can um, overcome the negatives because there's really no negatives. There's just learning paths and you can learn quicker and you can look for the signs and the you know the symbols that are around you and then take action and get out of the negative spaces fast does that make any sense i i might have been babbling total sense total <laughs> sense but there's an emergency we have to know how to get hold of this book please tell us <laughs> okay well you can get it at um uh, amazon is playing some games um, and I, it was very interesting that it's, you know, I'm, I'm selling a lot of books because I'm going out to these, uh, fairs and stuff and people are coming up and they bought the books and I'm signing them and people are calling me and telling me how much they like the books. But for some reason, um, every time I try and do something, it gets stopped. And a friend of mine who was a, um, correspondent um, down in I mean I know the books are out there so that's fine am I making money off the book probably not you know, because you know they're not they're not showing that they're going except that I'm in Target I'm in Walmart I'm you know I'm in Barnes and Noble and um, you know and so uh, 
but my friend, it was interesting, she was a, a Washington correspondent. And I said, you know, this is really crazy. I don't understand. I mean, I had my girlfriend ordered four or five books, and we went to Amazon, and I had her track everything, and they showed uh, even three months after the way there was no nothing shown. So um, I know that we're probably going to have to go to a break right now, but when we come back, I can tell you what happened and how, and why it's very important for word of mouth like you and me to help each, support each other to get this stuff out. Excellent. So it's hard to get the book on Amazon, but you can get it on Barnes & Noble and Target and Walmart. It's easily available, and it's Symbols of You by Linda Mackenzie, and Mackenzie is M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E. Is this correct? It is. <laughs> it's actually fantastic. So we're going to take a commercial break now, and when we come back, we're going to talk some more about symbols of you to our very important person, Linda Mackenzie. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here on The Chaparral Show. Imagine taking a journey with metaphysical teachers and spirit guides right in your own home. Well, now you can with Vivian Chopra's book, Everyday Magic. Everyday Magic helps you understand your life from new perspectives as it guides you to feel motivated to take control of your life and your future. Get Everyday Magic today at Amazon.com or for more information, visit Chopra.com or call 513-891-8062. 513-891-8062. That's 513-891-8062. VMware is a fresh perspective for virtualization on the cloud. Shaping the future, this all in one platform delivers virtual cloud service on any cloud. Visit our HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on VMware. CrystalHealingTechniques.com is the place to learn crystal healing, and there's even some free courses and certification. CrystalHealingTechniques.com has courses from beginner to advanced, and you'll learn from a master crystal healer. Explore new and unique material as you learn from the amazing award-winning textbook, The Complete Guide to Crystal Surgery. So discover the world of healing through crystals at CrystalHealingTechniques.com. Visit CrystalHealingTechniques.com or call 513-891-8062. If you're not in the U.S., listen up. SureTrader is one of the most trusted and reliable names in share trading. With 6 to 1 leverage and other perks, SureTrade is the best for penny stocks and day trades. To find out more, visit our advertiser page and click on the SureTrader banner. If you like this program and you want to hear more of the Chopras, then tune in to their YouTube channel called Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. There's demos, meditations, interviews, and more on their YouTube channel, Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. So relax, enjoy, and learn unique material as you watch the Chopras in action. Visit today on YouTube, and remember that channel, Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. Do it now. There's a respected metaphysical academy that's been around for over 22 years, and it's still going strong. If you're interested in energy healing, crystal healing, developing intuition, or shamanism, then the Four Winds Academy for the Healing Arts and Sciences is exactly right for you. With in-person and online classes and full certifications, their experienced teachers work with you and take an interest in your progress. To find out more, visit fourwindsacademy.org. That's the number four, windsacademy.org. Or call 513-891-8062. Expanding your mind. HealthyLife.net Hello and welcome back to The Chaparra Show. Today we are speaking to none other than the GM of our fantastic all-positive talk radio network, Linda McKenzie, and she is telling us all about her most recent book, Symbols of You. I'm hoping that we can get into the application aspects of this book, Linda, but we were kind of in the middle of you telling us and explaining how to get the book and what some of the experiences you've had are. So can we continue with that? Yes, I I really want to do that because um, 
you know, people are getting the book. I'm just not getting paid for the book. So, uh, so it's okay. And, you know, and, uh, and you can even get it at my, my website if you want to sign copy at lindamckenzie.net. But it was interesting because, um, I said every time I was trying to do an interview, I would get stopped. Every time I was, I was supposed to do a television show, I'd get stopped. And I called my friend and she was a Washington correspondent and she said, What's your book about? And I said, Simples of You. It increases intuition and, you know, you know, whatever. And she said, well, they don't want that out. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, she said, y- you know, they want to keep people in a fear state right now. And, you know, when you open up your intuition and you're mindful of things, you cannot be in fear. If you're living in the moment, you cannot be in fear. So he, she said, and if you want to open up intuition and showing the positive aspects of life, that's taking away fear. She says, and everything right now in the powers that be across the across the world is always trying to get us based in fear. So I said, yeah, but they forget that there is a higher power. So I don't care if I get paid for the book or not, as long as people are getting the book and they're getting the information. That's all that matters to me. And, um, and so, uh, and, and it is happening. So, uh, because we need to remember that every day, even by just being happy and joyful and coming from gratitude and love, we have a chance to change even wars. Because with the collective consciousness, if all of our thoughts are going to the same intention, there's a critical mass, and it's not a lot that is needed to do this anymore because uh, they, they now are saying that um, one conscious person is worth uh, almost a million sheeple, okay, that are just following wow. along. So, so concentrated energy now, the more people we can get to stay positive and get there, and there's enough of us out there now. Now it's just a matter of, us using our information to upraise the planet and everything else, and we don't have to care about what the powers that be are saying or whatever because we know we are safe and we know what we are um, provided for and we know we can't make a mistake. This is very empowering, Linda. It's very empowering to hear you speak that way, and it's, it's about the most positive thing that you can say is that if we can just contribute to the collective unconscious and the collective consciousness in a constructive and positive manner. And if if only a few of us do that, then we can affect the whole world. And we can affect the whole world positively by thinking in this way. Am I understanding you correctly that that's what you said? That's exactly it. And you can be part of the solution and not part of the problem just by loving and caring and being gratitude. So even if you're just loving your family, um, that is setting the frequency higher level than being down and depressed and fearful and oh, I gotta wear my mask. <laughs> I mean, stop already. <laughs> I mean, stop, you know. So, so, you know, um, so yes, that's what exactly what I'm saying. And that's why I'm so glad that this book is coming. And you know, it's gonna, there's gonna be a shift because there's always a critical mass, you know. And so, you know, this is, this is, and so I'm just very happy about it because, you know, I've just unleashed one, right? So in January, I have a new book coming out. So I'm gonna, yes, it's called the Total Mind Body Spirit Weight Loss. And it, uh, it's, uh, the reason I did that was because they have the new Wagovi and Ozempic drugs. They're really bad. They're 15, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month. Um, people are taking them. They're getting stomach paralysis where their stomach no longer works. They're getting colon blockages. They're getting all sorts of side effects. And, um, and people are going and spending billions of dollars to do these things to lose weight. And so I, I said, no, 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 no. And I had produced many years ago a, um, weight loss, uh, CD set 
Um, and so I'm turning it into a book and an audio book, and it won awards from the Olympic Committee back then and was used in acupuncture clinics all over the world. Um, and it's uh, letting people lose 15 to 35 pounds in six weeks without even changing their diet. It's all using visualization, and it works. I tested it on over 100 people. So um, so I'm releasing that. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm taking activism Activism, and instead of sitting there crying about it, yeah, 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 uh, stop it, stop it, stop it. I mean, if somebody listens, I'll tell them. But uh, you know, but um, what I'm doing is something positive. So I'll n- release the book saying a natural alternative to weight loss drugs. So that's what we have to do. We have to look and back, not complain, but look and see what we can do even on a small level so that we can change this environment and open it up. And we're doing it, although people don't know it because media is not reporting it, right? But we're doing it. Years ago, when I first started out, in 1987, nobody ever knew what mindfulness was. Now they're teaching it in kids, you know, in school. Right. Okay? Right. And so we've really done our job. So it's now time for the masters, like you guys and me, to go out and give real truth because people are looking for that now. And so um, so it's, it's going to come in the next uh, 20 years. It's going to be a phenomenal reversal and very positive. So I'm so hopeful for that. So, Linda, then it sounds like you need to come back on the show if you'd be willing to and talk to us about that book as well. Uh, It sounds really important. I think so, uh, because, you know, we're finding, you know, remember I owned a vitamin company for uh, many years and, and for eight years. And. We manufactured vitamins, so I know the inside outs of that world. Yes. And, uh, yes. and so, you know, right now we're battling uh, things that we cannot, um, uh, we don't know how to release yet. Okay, so, for example, um, they're finding the biggest problem right now why people are gaining weight and can't lose it, especially in America, is because of the... Um, um, PFAs, the plastics that are that are in our air, in our water, and in our bodies. Well, the oh. body is trying to get rid of it, and there's no way that we know yet to how to get these toxins of fat out of the body. But we can use our minds, right? When we are connected on a mind, body, spirit level, we can heal ourselves from anything, right? So if um, so that's what I'm saying with this weight loss thing, um, the book that I'm having, it's, it actually takes you through and uh, releases the toxins from your body, which a Wagovi or an Azempic drug is not going to do. So, right. so, uh, and you're working with that energy alignment and you're working with intention and consciousness and these are the key elements to our be- us being successful to live in, isn't it? We really need to work with intention and consciousness and energy alignment. Absolutely. Yes. So, Linda, let's go over it again, how people can find out more about you. You said lindamckenzie.net. Is that correct? That's correct. Can you you spell it for everyone? Just because I know that I had to check how to spell your name. Yes. I think it will be useful. It's it's the Scottish way, Mackenzie. I'm not Scottish. I'm Italian-Irish, but my second husband (laughs) was. And I I was known by that name, so I kept it. So it's Mackenzie. M A C K E N Z I E and Linda's L I N D A, Linda McKenzie dot net. Perfect. And from there, they can find out more about you, about your publications, and most importantly, for this moment, symbols of you. This absolutely extraordinary compendium and guidebook that that is just gives you the world in an oyster. Uh, thank and uh, you. just wonderful. Oh, my gosh, that's so amazing, so wonderful, Linda. Is there any last word that you would like to say, or do you feel this is it? Oh, it's never it. <laughs> it's just the beginning, right? <laughs> well, <now>. so, yeah. <laughs> so everyone, stay strong. I hope you get the book, and you can open up your mind and your heart and your body, mind, and spirit into symbols, because it will change your life. So thank you so much, both of you, thank for you. having me on. Thank you so much, Linda. This was Linda McKenzie, the GM of our show, HealthyLife.net. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Linda. And everyone, please come back after the break 
Neil will be giving his spirit report, and we will go from there. Thank you. CrystalHealingTechniques.com is the place to learn crystal healing, and there's even some free courses and certification. CrystalHealingTechniques.com has courses from beginner to advanced, and you'll learn from a master crystal healer. Explore new and unique material as you learn from the amazing award-winning textbook, The Complete Guide to Crystal Surgery. So discover the world of healing through crystals at CrystalHealingTechniques.com. Visit CrystalHealingTechniques.com or call 513-891-8062. Roku is like having your own video library with over 300,000 choices. And it's the best way to get Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and so much more. There's a Roku player for every budget. So go to HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on the Roku banner. If you like this program and you want to hear more of the Chopras, then tune in to their YouTube channel called Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. There's demos, meditations, interviews, and more on their YouTube channel, Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. So relax, enjoy, and learn unique material as you watch the Chopras in action. Visit today on YouTube and remember that channel, Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. Do it now. Discover the world's largest anti-aging organization, Life Extension. For the best information, vitamins, and supplements, you just can't beat Life Extension. To start extending your life, go to the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and click on the Life Extension banner. There's a respected metaphysical academy that's been around for over 22 years, and it's still going strong. If you're interested in energy healing, crystal healing, developing intuition, or shamanism, then the Four Winds Academy for the Healing Arts and Sciences is exactly right for you. With in-person and online classes and full certifications, their experienced teachers work with you and take an interest in your progress. To find out more, visit fourwindsacademy.org. That's the number fourwindsacademy.org. Or call 513-891-8062. Imagine taking a journey with metaphysical teachers and spirit guides right in your own home. Well, now you can with Vivian Chopra's book, Everyday Magic. Everyday Magic helps you understand your life from new perspectives as it guides you to feel motivated to take control of your life and your future. Get Everyday Magic today at Amazon.com or for more information, visit Chopra.com or call 513-891-8062. That's 513-891-8062. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Hi there. Welcome back. You're listening to The Chaperone Show, and I'm Neil, very pleased to be sharing with you my shamanic journeys to the spirit realm and reporting back on the guidance I receive directly from the spirits. For this journey, I went to the upper world to ask the spirits to show something relevant and interesting. I begin at my usual starting point on a rocky ledge in the mountains, and from here I can travel upwards alongside my energy beam. I put out my intention for the spirits to meet me in the upper world and help me with my request. I go up and up and up, and eventually I see above me pinkish marble-like steps that I've seen before, and they are a way of entering into the upper world. The steps are wide and spacious and they curve upwards and they're taking me to the entrance of some sort of building that looks church-like. Not really a church, but a similar kind of entrance. And I go in and to my surprise I see that there actually are pews, dark wooden pews inside. But it isn't an ordinary regular church. I don't see any of the usual Um, decor, there's nothing on the walls, there's no stained glass, there's no statues. I ask the spirits to please be present 
bringing their power, their wisdom, and their compassion to help me understand. All the pews are empty, and I realize that I'm actually getting a first message, a first understanding. And that is that as a generalization, people don't attend to their spirituality, the spiritual dimension of life. So I'm being shown, symbolically, I guess, a deconsecrated church. The, two, the true spiritual dimension has been diminished in most people's lives. So I walk up the middle aisle wondering what else I'll be shown, and I pass through a curtain of streaming color and light, and I then get into the next section, which is very bright with a golden light, and I'm being told that a true religious, in quotation marks, religious experience, or rather encounter, is an encounter with glory. That's the term the spirits give me. And this place is very bright and golden, and there is a bima, or altar, where one can read the Torah. And what's on it is something that looks like a scroll, not necessarily a Torah, but definitely a scroll. And here, the major teaching is the one that we are all familiar with, of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and especially do not unto others as you would have them not do unto you. So that this is a fundamental concept. And then the spirits transmit another phrase to me, glory, 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 the whole world is full of God's glory. And the spirits then give me a very important reminder that when they are giving me the, the term God, for us to really understand that this is just a shorthand, convenient term for some infinite spiritual magnificence. And the term God just points to that. We certainly shouldn't have a reduced notion of God and one that's particular to a particular religion. The, the world that we experience, this is the spirits telling me, is the manifestation of God's glory. We should continually remind ourselves of that and look out for that, especially in nature where one sees flowers and leaves and the air is fresh. These are all the more overt manifestations in nature of God. And the spirits say we are not just inhabiting God's glory, but we are experiencing God's glory. And, of course, there are photos and videos on the Internet of beautiful scenes and this, which we can look at. And the spirits say especially it's manifest in young uh, animals and in babies and in young children. These are the obvious manifestations of God's glory on earth. And we usually take too much for granted. We don't appreciate the glory that surrounds us. In fact, the spirits say to me that we are much more aware of ugliness and suffering and cruelty, and they use this awful term abomination, and that it's pushed unto us so strongly and continuously via the news, etc., you know, really horrible stuff that is overwhelming. And then we develop the feeling that that's all there is to life, this horrible suffering. And I ask the spirits if I can see more that's interesting and useful. And one of my spirits shows itself to me and says that she's reminding me that the physical dimension, this incarnated experience, is only one aspect of reality, that spiritual existence is just as real, maybe more real. Unfortunately, for the most part, we are cut off from the spiritual dimension, and we don't enjoy this aspect of reality that is glorious. And they remind me of a hymn that I have mentioned on a previous um, show, God can be our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. And these days, where the feeling of being peaceful and safe at home is so threatened for many people that um, it's really important to understand that our true eternal home 
is where we abide with God. And I say to the Spirit that I do understand this, but in the face of terrible experiences, these ideas can almost seem too abstract. And the Spirit say, yes, exactly. That's why we need to build up our connection to the glory of God. In the same way that we need to build and train for a demanding physical event, like, say, a marathon, so we also need to build up our spiritual stamina and spiritual strength. And that enables us to, A, be in touch with the true nature of reality, and B, make us better prepared to manage great stress and disruption when it occurs. And we, most of us have the time to build up our spiritual muscle, and we should be doing that. And they then give me an, a very nice analogy, they show me, of lowering a bucket as in, into an old-fashioned well and drawing up the sustenance of water. And they say that we should dip our buckets to get our life-sustaining spiritual hydration. So many people are obsessed with carrying water around every day, keeping hydrated, but we should be even more desirous of spiritual hydration. We must ensure that we access spiritual hydration every day. We must drink, as it were, bottles of spiritual energy every day. And, and that's because we're, in a way, we're spiritually uh, deficient, just as one can be um, deficient on in vitamins. Spiritual nourishment is just as crucial as food and drink. And then, too soon for me, the drums change, calling me back to the upper world, to a lower world. So I thank the spirits, and I return from what I'm calling this tabernacle back through the pews and this time there are actually flashes of light in the pews and this interestingly represents the light of spiritual connection that is there in the world and I know this is going to be something that I'll explore on a future shamanic journey I'm looking forward to reporting on that so I return to the middle world and the journey is over thank you You've been listening to Neil of The Chapra Show, and we're going to go on our break now, and when we come back, Vivian will continue with her messages from crystals. Thank you. If you like this program and you want to hear more of the Chopras, then tune in to their YouTube channel called Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. There's demos, meditations, interviews, and more on their YouTube channel, Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. So relax, enjoy, and learn unique material as you watch the Chopras in action. Visit today on YouTube and remember that channel, Crystal Surgery and Crystal Healing Techniques. Do it now. You have too little time to shop, so try Farm Fresh to you. They deliver organic food the way nature intended, delivered straight to your home or office, economically. Visit our web advertiser page and click on Farm Fresh to you now. Welcome back to the Chapra Show. Today I've made a big decision. Even though I have spoken to Rose Quartz before on this show, I want to speak to Rose Quartz again today. Why? Because Rose Quartz was the first stone that I ever encountered, and these days it has become one of my new favorites. I will admit that historically, Kunzite has been my favorite heart stone, so it's a very big surprise for me to feel this shift in loyalty. But in my defense, it isn't really a shift in loyalty. It's an increase in respect that has come about from perceiving the deeper layers of what rose quartz can offer us. Let's go back to my first encounter with the Mineral Kingdom when I met rose quartz. 
My father is from Namibia. It was then known as Southwest Africa. When I was five, our family went to Southwest Africa to visit everyone, and then again when I was 10 years old. And this happened on that second visit when I was 10 years old. My parents' former neighbor, Carl, invited us to his home, and I remember the experience very, very clearly. It is emblazoned on my mind. We entered the front gate and walked through the front garden, complete with green lawn and blooming red hibiscus. Then we walked down the hallway where that ran the length of the house and opened, and that hallway opened up into the kitchen. We continued through the kitchen and on through the back door and into the backyard. The backyard was true to the surrounding terrain, a desert. To the left was the washing line with laundry drying on it, and to the right was a huge glowing pile of rose quartz in a rock garden. It was planted with succulents and it was just built of rose quartz. I stopped in my tracks and just stared. For me, it was a moment of truth and right then and there, I said to my dad, one day I'm going to collect minerals. Ha, oh, my dad laughed. That's an expensive hobby. Now I can testify he was right, and so was I. So there was the very first impact of rose quartz upon my life. It revealed my future to me and set me on the path. What more can one ask? It's ironic, because Carl's comment about the rose quartz was, it's in the way. We have to blast past it to get to what we're actually mining but it's quite pretty, so I brought some home. And I remember at the time I thought, in the way? And I wondered. I wondered about in the way. And now, retelling the story, I see it wasn't in the way. It literally showed me the way. The true point of the story, though, is that Rose Quartz makes a very particular kind of strong heart connection. And the heart and soul enjoy oneness. So the rose quartz was able to introduce me to my soul and show me my soul's journey in this lifetime. I'm not exactly sure why I did this, but I subsequently dismissed rose quartz as a beginner stone. I mean, I guess it's because that's where I began. I should be grateful that the mineral kingdom is willing to put up with my stupidity because I sure have some dumb thoughts when it comes to understanding crystals. I have some insightful ones too, but I think those are the ones that come from the crystals, and the stupid ones are the ones that come from me. <laughs> Just an aside. Rose quartz is actually a representative of one of, one of life's principles, namely, the thing and its opposite live in the same space. How so? Well, rose quartz is both very, very common and also extremely rare. More specifically, as a mass, rose quartz is common. But as crystals, rose quartz is hard to find. When I think about it, several of my most prized stones are rose quartz. I have a sweet little rose quartz crystal cluster, a quartz crystal covered with a layer that is studded with both smoky and rose quartz crystals, and believe it or not, a very large smoky quartz point that begins with a base of rose quartz and then it doesn't even transition. It just becomes dark, smoky quartz. This particular piece stands on our family altar together with all the photos of our relatives who have crossed over. Rose quartz is definitely a heart stone, no doubt about it. For starters, the color pink relates to the heart chakra. But that is just the first beginner aspect, as I now discover how rose quartz goes way beyond that. Rose quartz can profoundly penetrate the conundrum of how our emotions affect each and every layer of the heart chakra. By way of explanation, I just want to say that we have seven major chakras, and each chakra gives rise to a layer of the energy field. The very first layer is the physical body. 
Rose quartz can mitigate the emotional effects on the physiology and functioning of the physical heart. Neil and I experienced this firsthand during the pandemic. You may not be aware, but Neil and I, we work one-on-one with, on one with clients, and of course, during the first wave of the pandemic, we had to close our doors and then create an online business to generate a new livelihood. This was somewhat stressful to say the least and our blood pressure rose accordingly. We bought a blood pressure cuff and did a little experiment. We infused rose quartz into our heart chakras and measured our blood pressure before and after, and we found that just one to two minutes of infusing rose quartz into our heart chakras significantly reduced our blood pressure. And I do want you to note, though, that if you take blood pressure medication because you have high blood pressure, You must remember that our blood pressure was rising due to emotional reasons, and I surmise that this is why the rose quartz could work so instantly in this circumstance. So please don't go off high blood pressure meds and and put rose quartz in your pocket. I'm not sure that that will work. When I ask rose quartz what message it would like to share with all of you, I get this answer. Always bear in mind that humans should not place more value on what is rare but rather place more value on what is common. Something that is common or ubiquitous becomes part of the scenery and becomes undervalued because you are all forgetting that there is a good reason for something to be common. It is integral to life. For example, electricity is now common. Take a moment and imagine what your lives would be like if something disrupts your electricity supply. Your entire lives as you know it would cease. Your world would no longer function. Stop taking what is common for granted and be sure to preserve access to all your common resources, most particularly water. Okay, I'm sorry to say this, but that's kind of scary and true. I know that I'm grateful to live in an area of the world where plentiful. As a child, growing up in South Africa, we had frequent droughts and went through many periods with water restrictions. More recently, Cape Town became the first city in the world to run out of water. When the, when the rains finally came, it was certainly cause for celebration. I know exactly what Rose Quartz is talking about, and I'm certainly going to be seeing where else these wise words can be applied. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Shapiro Show, where Viv and Neil explore this big adventure called life. Please tune in again next month and come back and listen to The Shapiro Show with us. Thank you.